Well, hello everyone. I thought I'd just give you a quick update on what I've been doing over the last few nights. Um, of course, it's, everyone knows it's still lockdown here in Northern Ireland. We're just past our third week and the government have issued another three weeks of lockdown. So it looks like at the very least we could be in lockdown until mid-May. And that's if they don't extend it again closer to the time. But fingers crossed we maybe get free around May because there's a lot of things happening in the sky. I want to get shooting like NLCs and thunderstorm season. We really need to be on the road soon. But anyway, I've been keeping very, very busy. I've never had a board day yet. Plenty of things to do. And I've been making most of the time doing a lot of uh, observing. So just to follow, let you know what I've been doing. Uh, no photography since. No drone flying yet. I'm going to have to do something about that very soon. But I've been concentrating a lot on visual observing through telescopes. As you may have seen from some of the recent vlogs. Uh, amazingly during this lockdown we've had the best spell of high pressure weather we've had in a long time. I mean almost every day is sunny and warm and dry there's been no rain at all now for nearly two weeks next it's clouding over a little bit over the weekend but still dry more or less and next week is showing high pressure again with sunny spells and clear skies but to have a lot of tonight is clear and is forecast to be for a while that'll be six clear nights excuse me six clear nights in a row i've never had six clear nights in a row in this country for years it reminds me of the days back when I used to observe years ago, relent relentlessly searching for comets and doing a lot of observing. I uh, never had the 16 inch, I was observing every single night and it was so clear, the weather was so good back then, the dark skies were so good, it was so clear that I actually wished for one night off, cloudy night so I can get a break. I was almost burning myself out doing that much observing. Well, this is starting to feel a little bit like that. I haven't seen such a run of clear nights since those days, which is really really unusual for Northern Ireland because in recent years there's been a big increase in cloudy nights and the weather has been different there's definitely something going on but this has been a real treat to have lockdown with sunny weather I'm getting vitamin D every day I got a bit of colour I was out the last few days in the garden and working on various things and the nights are just exceptional but over the last few nights I've been observing all three comets visible in the evening sky from the Northern Hemisphere these comets are all circumpolar which means they're, vis they're located within the circumpolar constellations. These are constellations which rotate around the North Celestial Pole, Polaris, throughout the course of a year. And because they're circumpolar and from our latitude, they don't set below the horizon. So these constellations and the comets within them are visible all year round somewhere in the sky. It so happens to be that all three of these objects are in a very well placed part of the sky to the north and northwest. Comet Atlas is definitely falling apart. Uh, high resolution CCD images are showing the, the nucleus broken into four segments and these are dissipating, developing their own tails and fading. I've watched the comet over the course of five nights and I've noticed every single night it's been getting fainter and fainter. I could see the elongated shape and the degree of condensation has been getting less and less so with each passing night too. When I first seen it five nights ago the degree of condensation was three and the elongated shape could be seen and the comet was quite well defined. Last night, I couldn't even find the comet because the transparency was so poor. But on the previous night, I seen it as an, a smudge. I couldn't even make out the elongation. It was just an ill-defined smudge spread out over a large area and with just a imperceptible hint of brightness towards the centre. I read it a de degree of condensation of 1. And that's a generous 1, which means it's very diffuse, very low surface brightness. There's no bright... Uh, features within it to make it stand out so it's not a comet for inexperienced observers at all I it was just visible above the background sky in my 8 inch telescope so it's a difficult object for some people it's going to require large apertures and good transparent dark skies to follow on the nights ahead it'll come to a point where it's just to sit completely and fade away into the background so I'm tracking it as often as I can I hope to see it again even though the comet is no longer going to be a spectacular object it's still interesting that the comet is falling apart to be able to observe a comet looking at this this faint smudge and knowing it's breaking apart and disintegrating is quite exciting in itself. It's interesting scientifically and from an observational standpoint. I've seen fragmented comets before, but not during the course of fragmenting. I've seen sh the three components of Schwa 29... No, um, is a 73P Schwachman Wachmann? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll have to check my website on that one. 
But that comet actually broke into three parts, and there was three comets visible within the area of Hercules years ago. I remember observing them telescopically in three different parts of the sky at the same time. It was really cool. Prior to that, the last time I seen a comet inadvertently breaking up was S4 Linear back in 2000. During June, I think it was May or June 2000, I remember getting my first, or my new edition of Sky and Telescope magazine, and then it was a chart for S4 Linear. I spent the evening tracking it down with the with the eight inch, and I s seen it within the, the the southern area of Ursa Major in the paws of the Great Bear, very low in the bright twilight sky. It had a beautiful fan shaped dust tail on it. It looked like a proper comet. It was a very nice object, even visible in the finder scope. But on the nights ahead, I tried to find it again, and it was vanished. I couldn't see it. And that's when I found out later that the comet had disintegrated into pieces. This is the third time I'm witnessing a disintegrating comet. Oh, sorry, let me shake it. I've got the GoPro here set up on my tripod here in the office. Outside's a lovely sunny day. I was going to follow them out, out in the sunshine, but it's quite windy outside, so it mess with the audio. But anyway, the main comets of interest now are 2019 Y1 Atlas and 2017 T2 Pan Stars. Both comets are in the 8th, 9th magnitude range, means they're visible in small telescopes, they're visible in, in binoculars. Their T2 was really the main showstopper, it's well condensed object, hint of a uh, dust tail on it, well well placed within northeast Cassiopeia, between Cassiopeia and Camelel Pardalis in the north, very well placed every evening. It was the main comet to see, but the other night I noticed why one atlas looked brighter, it looked more condensed. Just a, a better looking object in general. I compared it to T2. Um, I, I assumed that either T2 had faded or there was cirrus cloud over the area, which there was at the time. And I paid a little heat. I thought it was just a comparison issue. But I found out last night that Y1 Linear has went into a minor outburst. Last night I got to see it again with fresh eyes. And yes, the comet is actually a beautiful object. It's bright in the field of view. It's oval shape. It's compact well condensed fuzzball with a bright condensation at center. Uh, degree of condensation has increased to about DC5 or DC6 even. And I actually noticed quite a prominent tail last night extending to the west of north for about 15 arc minutes. 15 arc minutes is about a quarter, well it's about um, half the size of the moon. 30 arc minutes is half a degree and 15 arc minutes is a quarter of a degree. So the tail of the comet is extending for at least a quarter of a degree visually through my 8 inch telescope. I could see it using averted vision. Have you ever use the technique of averted vision? Have you ever heard of it? It's like using the side of your eyes. When we look at an object directly with the, the cone, we have cones in our eyes and we have rods in our eyes. Those are the cells that line the back of the eye. The cones are at, located at the center of the eye and the rods are located at the side. When we observe bright objects during the day, we use our rods, sorry, cones. And cones detect colour, cones are good for bright scenes like daylight phenomena, but once it gets dark, we start to, the, the rods start to kick and the pigmentation changes, and that's why if you're letting yourself dark adapt, you should dark, dark adapt for at least 15 to 20 minutes before doing some serious observing to let that pigmentation and that chemical change take place at night time. Full dark adaption, you'll be able to use the rods at the aid of your vision. When you're looking at an object on a telescope, particularly a faint, delicate object like a distant galaxy or a, a diffuse comet. Look at the comet, but use the side of your eyes, your peripheral vision, which is known as averted vision in astronomy. When you use averted vision, you look to the side of the object, but at the same time keeping the main object in the general focus of your eye. And that that's when you'll get more detail popping out. Averted vision is when the rods kick in and you get to see delicate detail. So last night, using concentrated averted vision, I was able to see this tail quite nicely, like a monochrome, tadpole slender feature of moving up to the west of north of the comet. It was very nice actually and I suspect it could be longer in the nights ahead. A recent magnitude estimate today actually after my last night's observing placed the comet at magnitude 7.5 which is technically within range of 7 by 50 and 10 by 50 binoculars. Another idea for seeing faint objects in the telescope is to tap the tube of the telescope. The human eye is better at detecting faint details when there's motion involved. And the same applies for a comet hunting. If you're moving the telescope 
either vertically or horizontally sweeping the sky, the eye is better at detecting faint objects because there's a field of view is moving. It's, you know, it's just an inherent nature of the human eye. So if you're observing a faint galaxy or a comet or something, you're pushing the eye to your limit, and you want to ferret out that amount of some kind of delicate detail you're not seeing, it just pops in out of view. Try a vertical vision and try tapping gently the side of the telescope to shake the field. Sometimes a, a faint object like a tail will suddenly reveal itself during that shake. Give it a go. I was trying it last night and it definitely works. It's interesting about why one atlas this comet should be fading. It's actually leaving the inner part of the solar system now. It's already rounded the sun and is leaving. And as the comets leave the solar system, they leave tail first. So unlike these pictures you see of comets, everyone just assumes when you see the tail, the tail's uh if the tail's pointing that way, you think the comet's going this way. But no, the tail precedes the comet as it leaves the solar system. So it's interesting you see that tail knowing it's that's the direction the comet is moving. And with why one atlas I was able to detect motion of the comet within less than an hour. I'd say it moved about five arc minutes or so within an hour. That's the interesting thing about observing comets. Even though these comets visible at evening time are not spectacular objects, they're 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 faint objects, but they're interesting because they're the sisters and brothers of the great comets which will appear in the future and observing them is a great way of training your eye and teaching your mind a combination to know what comets look like and also improves your observational ability in general another trick to do is to use uh, breathing exercises this was something the late Leslie Peltier tried and some other observers too when you're looking in the eyepiece try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth a nice deep breath do it a couple of times, then relax, and then breathe normally, and then look in the eyepiece and look at the object again. When you do that, you're actually increasing the blood supply to your brain and eyes. You're also oxygenating the eyes when you do that, and it's possible to see a little bit fainter or see a fainter object using that technique. Combine the, the breathing technique with averted vision and with tapping the telescope, and that's the tricks you can do to see faint detail. So, yeah, those are the three comets visible a minute. Uh, unless you're an experienced comet observer with a dark sky and a good sized telescope, I would ignore Y4. Uh, otherwise, if you do have the gear, go for it. Track it until it's no longer visible because it's interesting scientifically. Uh, the main priority now for me is Y1 Atlas. It's putting on a bit of a show for us. And as we're waiting, for the well, it's still dark skies at the minute. New moon is next week with the Lyrid Meteor Shore then which I hope will be clear that night, I'll be doing some backyard meteor watching. But after that, the, the, the thin crescent moon will be starting to appear in the evening sky and wax and more and more, and then we'll get into the next week, two week period of bright moonlight, which will interfere with dark sky observing. But once that period leaves, we'll be entering the start of May, and the next dark period, and once we get to mid-May, we'll be keeping an eye out for Comet Swan, which might become visible uh, in the morning sky for mid-northern latitudes, mid to late May. The comet is actually a lovely object in the southern hemisphere at the minute. It's not visible from the north. And it's around magnitude 7.9. Nice green signage and rich comet. With a nice gas tail on it. It's very photogenic. It seems very healthy. It's moving north and it will become visible for us around and after perihelion passage. Usually comets when they pass perihelion passage they're brighter. They, they tend to have a, a better tail structure or tail length. So I'm hoping this one will be a nice object for us. The only problem is Carl, is it Carl Batams said uh, he successfully predicted the downfall of Comet Atlas and he said this comet may fall apart too. It's possible that Swan is experiencing an outburst and that outburst won't last forever. So we'll see. We'll just have to keep observing it and track it and see how it performs. If it survives and keeps brightening then it might be a nice object in May. It'll be difficult for us because it'll be low in the sky. At this time of year we get a very bright twilight which lingers all through the night. We don't get proper dark sky, so that'll work against us. But even having said that, the object, if it performs, should be nice in a telescope and nice in binoculars. And maybe, just maybe, there'll be a hint of seeing it with the naked eye, depending on how it performs. But it'll be something I have to look forward to during this lockdown period and our comet to hunt down. So that's what I've been doing. It's been a pleasure being out these nights with the telescope. I've been I cleaned my entire telescope down. I've wiped the outside of it. I've cleaned the optics. I've cleaned all the eyepieces and I my binoculars as well and every night I'm out observing I'm letting the telescope acclimatize by that I mean I'm setting it up outside I'm letting it cool down to the ambient air when that happens the stars begin to settle and they stop boiling in the field of view due to the turbulent atmosphere they get steady and you get good 
sharp images and seeing conditions. And I've been hunting these comets down. I've been doing deep sky observing. I've been sketching comets. And I've been particularly love some of my old favorite messy objects. I'm actually going to do a quick video on the messy objects soon for those interested in it because it's a good thing for new, new stargazers to get into. Um, the night before last I had exceptional transparency in the backyard. The sky was really top quality. So I put it on the 20mm super wide angle and I looked at M13, the great globular cluster in Hercules. Absolutely beautiful object. Amazing. Even though this is like one of the most basic objects for beginning observers to, to study, it's still amazing even all these years later to get reintroduce myself to it and see it with fresh eyes. Really beautiful. But my two favourite galaxies in the entire sky are visible now and Ursa Major directly overhead at the zenith these evenings is two galaxies which are visible in the same low power field of view of a telescope are also visible in binoculars. They're called M81 and M82. M81 is a face-on spiral galaxy that's tilted almost face-on to our point of view. M82 is an edge-on spiral galaxy. It's like a cigar. It's edge-on. And you get these two galaxies, the face-on and the edge-on, sitting in the same field of view, giving these two entirely different perspectives. And they're visible every night, and they're absolutely beautiful objects. It's amazing looking at these other island universes, each perhaps with their own 400, 500 billion suns in them, possibly, uh, possibly other intelligent beings living on planets around those stars, for all we know. Unbelievable. So looking at these objects is a real treat. Uh, the steady seeing conditions and good transparency at M82 had irregularities, obscurations, enhancements. Um, unbelievable. That galaxy is very active. It's got over 40 supernova events happening around it from what I read before. Possibly far more. There's the two galaxies interacted in the past, not so much collided, they passed through one another and that may have triggered star formation within M82. Both galaxies are certainly worth monitoring for supernova events in the future. But anyway, check them out as your observing project tonight. If you have a telescope, you want to see some deep sky objects, you want to learn something new, get a book, go on Google, find look at Ursa Major, find M81 and M82, those two galaxies, and enjoy them. And when you're done with that, hunt down Comet Y1 Atlas and Cassiopeia. No better way to spend a clear lockdown night. I'm just going to show you my logbook. Now this is my latest observing logbook. Just wrote up my observing session last night in it. I've been doing these logbooks for as long as I've been interested in astronomy. And I document everything in the sky I see, and they're not just astro related. But these are, I don't know if this is coming up too well in this GoPro here, if you can see it. I have no screen face and forwards, so I don't know what the view looks like. But uh, this is the previous night, that's Y4 Atlas. Comet Y4 Atlas, that elongated smudge from a couple of nights ago, before it completely vanished from, from view. To the right was last night's observation of Comet Y1 Atlas. That's the telescopic view of it, as seen through my 8 inch telescope at 26mm eyepiece. You can see the coma and the bright condensation at centre and the tail. Remember the tail is pointing west of north and the comet is leaving the source, so the tail is the tail's moving, the comet is moving in the same direction the tail points. And I could see it moving among these background stars over the course of an hour. It's pretty amazing to see a comet moving among the stars. It's worth driving a comet Sketch some of the brighter stars beside it, go away from it for an hour, observe something else and come back to it. And during that period you will notice when you go back to the eyepiece that the comet has changed position relative to the background stars. And that's how you can see it moving. It's amazing to think that that's an icy mountain with a huge tail travelling through space at perhaps 10, 20, 30 kilometres per second as it leaves the solar system. And you're seeing it from your backyard. So that's my last entry. I'll do it. I'm going to do a video on my log books at some point. Um, oh, by the way, if you're still interested in comets, remember I have an ebook out on comets. I've, loads of people have been buying it, so thank you very much, everyone, for your support. I really appreciate that. The ebook's available on my website. I also have it advertised on my social media pages, Night Sky Hunter. 
on Facebook and Martin McKenna on Twitter on Night Sky Hunter website. So if you're interested, drop me an email, send me a private message. I have it reduced down to £3 for the lockdown period. It's an absolute bargain. And with these comments visible, it's a perfect time to have a read through it. Uh, so thank you very much for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.